Uh, the camera malfunctioned right at the end of the last clip, but all we said was that if g of x, y is the gradient of some scalar function f, then we can integrate the gradient of the function dot n in much the same way as we integrated f dot n with respect to the surface area. And that integral would just be the integral of integral of gradient of f dot n ds, and that's the total flux of the gradient across the surface. And this integral is actually just a special case of this. Uh, this function could be any vector function. It doesn't have to be the gradient of a scalar field. And as we've seen before, remember that uh, if this function is the gradient of a scalar field, then we have uh, a conservative field, and there are certain conditions that apply to conservative fields. In this case, uh, if the function is the gradient of a scalar function, then we do have a conservative field. So that uh, this integral looks very much the same. It's just that in this case, we're sure that our field is conservative. And conservative fields have certain properties under integration. As an example of a vector field, of the flux of a vector field uh, through a surface, we're just going to find the flux of the gradient of this vector function f of x, y is equals x squared minus 2y plus z squared through the surface consisting of the upper half of the sphere of radius 2 centered at the origin. Now a picture of, well, the sphere of radius 2 centered at the origin, the upper half, uh, we can depict within the first quadrant by not within the first quadrant but within the uh, upper half plane we have a circle in the xy plane of radius 2 and some stuff on the on the paper I doubt if you can see it okay uh, circle of radius 2 uh, the sphere comes up to uh, an equal distance so that this point is two units uh, from the origin as is this and as is this and we can draw the semicircle we can draw some arcs and we can uh, kind of indicate the outline of the sphere so that what we get looks something like this so this is the upper half sphere and we have this vector, uh, this scalar function. We're going to take this, uh, find the gradient of the scalar function, and that's easily seen to be 2xi minus 2j plus 2zk. Just to get a rough idea of how this field acts, uh, if z is 0, we're down in the xy plane, we're on this circle. Um, and 2x is going to get larger as we move away from the y-axis. The negative 2j is going to be constant for every vector is going to have a negative 2j on it, every flux vector. And uh, what we're going to have is uh, a field that's pretty much in the negative direction here and in the negative direction here as we move along the y-axis. Now z equals 0 uh, in the xy plane as x gets bigger, this x component gets bigger, so that by the time we're out here, the x component is 4, the j component is negative 2, so that the vector will be somewhat longer than it is back here, um, and it'll have a component negative 2 units in the j direction. Uh, as x gets bigger, the vector starts to point out away. It's not radial to the circle. And we always have this negative j component so that the vectors might look something, the vector field might look something like this.
so uh, I'm going to stop at this point and then we'll start again.